Hi, I'm Morgan Jackson, and this is Breaking Bio Blitz. This week, Tom Housley and I speak to Natalie Bray, a grad student at Columbia University, about her work on soil biodiversity. So hi, my name is Natalie Bray. I'm a first year master's student at Columbia University, part of the conservation biology program in the Department of Ecology, Evolution, and Environmental Biology. And I'm inter interested in soil ecology, um, particularly the links between plants and the little tiny animals that live in the soil. And my thesis project this summer will focus on a specific group that lives in the soil, which are called the mesofauna, which are um, soil organisms that are less than two millimeters in size. And they live in the soil and they feed on um, plant material and other fungi and cool things living in the soil. And I want to look and see how they are affected by um, common herbivory and tree death. That's cool. So I like how mesofauna means really still freaking small. Um, we're used to megafauna being <laughs> elephants. We go from megafauna to mesofauna and jump a couple of orders of magnitude. So what sort of things are in this two millimeter range when we're talking about biodiversity? So um, most of them are things called mites and columbula. So columbula are more commonly known as springtails because they literally have a little tail on the end that looks like they could spring them across. And then mites are uh, arachnids, so they're related to spiders, so I guess people are more familiar with them. They make up about 95% of what we call mesofauna. Um, other, I guess, like famous mesofauna are nematodes, but they're in a kind of their own group. And, there's a bunch of just little things that you would never know really existed, but I'm really focusing on the mites and the columbula since they're the most important um, organisms in that group. So how are you going to be going through and sorting them out? That is tough. I've done one research project where I did it, but um, I'm doing some work. So my, my thesis location will be um, Black Rock Forest, mm -hmm. which is um, a research station about an hour outside of New York City. And um, so people have done some work on mites there, but they haven't done a lot of work on the um, other, I guess, mesofauna organisms. So I have a little bit of help sorting with those. But it's basically going to be me with the soil core, pulling out um, soil cores, and then um, extracting these little guys and counting and trying to identify species, which is going to be very difficult. I have a mean, horrible question for you. Um, why? Is soil and okay. tiny, tiny <laughs> creatures important? I'm glad you asked that question. I'm very well versed at answering that question. <laughs> so in, in forest ecosystems, there's obviously a lot of things that are going on above ground. There's lots of trees. There's lots of cool animals that run around. But a lot of the really important cycling processes happen in the soil. And so even though these are really tiny animals, there's a lot, a lot, a lot of them. So um, what they do is they actually feed on you know, dead plant material, they feed on kind of the organisms that live near the root material, and so what they're essentially doing is transferring all the energy and matter from the plants back into the soil. So what they produce themselves um, is kind of this, you know, is an important link between, you know, having plant material that goes into soil and then plants regrowing in that soil and having the necessary nutrients um, based on, you know, all that recycled material. And so, um, I'm, I'm interested in soil biodiversity and soil ecology because I think people often ignore what's going on beneath our feet and there's a lot of things happening in soil that are really important that maintain forests, that maintain carbon cycling and I don't think people think about that enough. Okay, well played. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Good job. Um, so you, you also talked about how you're going to be looking at how um, like the plant growth around the, these areas um, is affecting the soil biodiversity. So what do you think is going to be happening there? So what I mean I anticipate is that if um, you know if there's a disturbance nearby, so if there's a dead tree or if the area has been extensively grazed, there are going to be less animals because once the plants are removed, their food source and even some of like um, the spaces in the soil that are created by the plants where they live is then is now removed, and so it's essentially bringing all the material from the plants to the soil. Obviously, I think we're going to see decrease, you know, abundance and diversity in these areas that have been disturbed versus the more pristine areas. How is this going to impact some of the land use in the area? Do you think? Because um, I'm sure. You said about an hour outside of New York City. I imagine that there's a lot of development going on in this sort of area. So um, are you looking at kind of this could be what happens if things get taken over? 
Yeah, so what um, I'm actually, Black Rock Forest is pretty isolated. It's a field station and it's um, solely for experimental purposes. So what they've actually done is simulated forest disturbances. And so I won't be actually sampling on like an urban to rural gradient. I'll be sampling within the forest. But in this forest, there are different plots where trees have been girdled. So girdle means you just kind of cut across the entire tree so it's no longer alive, but it's still sanding. And then they have different areas where different herbivores are allowed to graze. And so um, I think those, those kind of disturbances are just kind of those mild disturbances. They're not as intense as an urban disturbance, but those are disturbances that are more likely to happen with climate change, with land use change in um, like primary or secondary forest areas. So are you going to be tracking any of the uh, her like things happening at the higher levels with the herbivores, or is it more that you're looking at the arthropods and then kind of extrapolating from there? So yeah, I'm, I'm mainly focused on the um, the arthropods, but the, um, the site I'm working at, they have um, a lot of deer. Deer is like a big issue, and so they've been tracking those. And so based on all the information I got from them about the deer populations, I've picked kind of my sampling areas. And so hopefully I'll get to the areas where deer are a really big issue, and so they'll have an effect on the soil communities. Cool. So just to, to round it out here, um, I assume a lot of your time, you said, is going to be sent, spent counting tiny little things. Uh, any idea on kind of the diversity, how many different kinds of tiny little things you'll be trying to count? So I think there's going to be a lot. Is When you pull like a chunk of soil out, you'll have hundreds of thousands of different microbes, and I'll be ignoring those, unfortunately. <laughs> um, but then in terms of like my group of mesofauna, um, again, they'll mostly be mites and you know, at least five to ten species of each one of those, um, if not more. And then there'll be a bunch of stuff that it will not be able to identify. One, because it's either immature or it's just this strange looking animal, or it's been somewhat you know, um, like destroyed in the sampling process. So there'll be a lot of unknowns, unfortunately, but I'm going to try my best to really focus on like these mites and these columbia, and hopefully maybe I'll learn something new that's living in the soil. Awesome. I think you're probably going to come out as one of the world's leading Columbia expert, experts because I, I don't think so. there's a whole lot of them out there, so good luck with that. Where yeah. can people follow along with uh, your your core work and, and maybe see some of these mesofauna? So I don't tweet or blog, unfortunately, but you can um, go to blackrockforest.org, which is the forest I'll be working at, and they um, often post, will we'll be posting um, kind of progress on my um, work this summer. Awesome. Well, thanks a lot for talking to us today. Thank you very much. You can follow along with all of the research being done by the Columbia University grad students by following their blog at cuinthefield.wordpress.com. That's the letter C, the letter U, followed by inthefield.wordpress.com. Also, you can follow along with us and find all of our old recordings at breakingbio.com and drop us a line on Twitter at breakingbio. That's it for this week. 